This is from the 50s. From a classic Budweiser. This is a can from the, from the 30s. To a vintage Coors. Joe Older has an impressive collection of wall-to-wall -wall beer cans spanning generations from A. The very first cans up there, A, B, C. To Z. And there's Zodies down at the very bottom. Joe shares his passion with enthusiasts from all across the country. He's part of a Florida group called Gator Traders. That's the local chapter of the BCCA, the Brewery Collectibles Club of America. And we post shows throughout the state of Florida. And we'll have 100 people or so come in and buy, sell, and trade anything related to beer. Beer signs, trays, cans, bottles. He wasn't even old enough to drink when he started collecting them. It was a very, very popular hobby back in the 1970s for some reason, and a lot of kids did it. 50, 60, 70 years ago, it was not uncommon for people working on a house or working in a building to have a beer with their lunch, and they would oftentimes stick the beer can in the wall, and that's where we find a lot of cans, is in old buildings that are being remodeled, torn down, and old beer cans will come out of the walls or in the attic. Some of them have really gone up in value. By a lot. I would say it's at least twenty-five to $30,000. There's about 1,600 cans in here. I have cans in here anywhere from 50 to several thousand dollars. Sometimes a new piece will just be found, and that's kind of exciting when you think you've seen everything. Dan Morian turned beer can collecting into a business, creating Morian auctions for those looking for that rare find. You can get a can for 50 cents, or uh, the most one has sold for that I know of is $150,000. This happens to be the very first one in the world, Kruger's Special, and that was 150000 to me, it's kind of surprising it's not worth more. Um, it's the first one in the world. It's basically the holy grail of this hobby. But it's not all about the value of these cans. I love the historical aspect. I love to read about the brewing history, where the cans came from, what the brewery was like, who owned it, how they got started. Joe has tropical and silver bar cans that were manufactured in Tampa. The logos are very, very similar. They're almost the same, but they're different colors. There's even a buccaneer in Joe's collection. He's got a little swashbuckler there. Uh, it's got a map, like a treasure map on it. He's got a bullseye made for target practice. Many of these are found with bullet holes in them. Many of them are. <laughs> There's a Schlitz with a military past. So during World War II, they made everything, you know, that goes to the troops had to be camouflaged. So the beer cans were camouflaged, both top and bottom and the sides and everything. And even some James Bond themed cans, neither shaken nor stirred. So this is out for just a very brief time in the late 60s. So what kind of cans would be considered valuable? Well, let's just say you couldn't crush them easily. The older cans are the better cans. So what you're looking for is the older steel type of cans, so they're not aluminum. Some aluminum cans have some value, but very, very few of them do. If it's got a cone-shaped spout on it, that's also a good indicator. And any can that shows instructions on how to open it, those were the very earliest cans because actually the can opener was invented for the beer can. So they had to teach people how to get the beer out of the can when they didn't have a pull tab. But don't be so quick to throw out the cans made today. Oh, I always say keep your cans. <laughs> if you like them and you have a place to display them, why not? You know, they could, um, if there's not a lot of them made, some of these craft brews issue small runs. I think they, I think they could be collectible and valuable in the future. How about that? All right, Dan says those steel collector's cans are usually empty. And here's why, because if they're full, the beer could actually evaporate through the can and cause damage. Huh. Had no idea. Oh. By the way, the best-selling cans at his most recent auction sold for more than forty thousand dollars a piece. What? An empty beer can. Oh. That's.